Thank you, Senator Billy. Senator Di Natale. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Acting Deputy President. Uh, Mr. Uh, Madam Acting Deputy President, uh, today I rise to speak about a resident of Victoria, but also about a matter that is of concern to all Australians. That resident is the Leadbeater's possum. Uh, I'm afraid that this wonderful part of Australia's natural history, a wonderful part of this planet's incredible biodiversity, could soon be lost forever. Leadbeater's possum is a tiny little marsupial. Uh, it's found only in Victoria. It's a relative of the sugar glider. It's, a, it's an, uh, an amazing little animal. It constructs very large but intricate nests where it's, uh, it huddles together in families uh, to shelter from the, war, uh, from the cold uh, Victorian winter months. Uh, we, be, we were so proud of this animal in Victoria that in 1968 we made it Victoria's faunal emblem. Now, the possum's habitat is on Melbourne's doorstep in the forests of the Central Highlands <coughs> in our magnificent uh, old-growth mountain ash forests. Because they aren't found anywhere else in the world, the future of this animal is intimately tied to these wonderful forests. Any threat to the forests means extinction for the Leadbeater's possum. In fact, uh, no one actually saw one of these animals for over 50 years, and it was presumed to be extinct until it was spotted again in 1961. Since its rediscovery, it's been recorded in more than 300 locations, though many of these places have been disturbed by logging and by fire. Hillsville Sanctuary is home to a small captive breeding population, and as part of Zoos Victoria, the sanctuary's uh, biologists are attempting to fight its extinction and trying to change the fate of, the, of this threatened, spe of threatened species like the leadbeaters. The work of the uh, expert biologists is to be commended, but they do face an uphill battle. The possum is listed as a threatened species in Victoria and is classified as endangered under the EPBC Act. This has triggered the preparation of a recovery plan under Commonwealth law and an action statement in Victoria. Sadly, both the action statement and the recovery plan are out of date and neither takes into account the destruction of half the possum's habitat in the 2009 Black Saturday fires. Professor David Lindenmeyer, the country's foremost expert on the Leadbeater's possum, and his team from ANU have undertaken the longest forest monitoring program in the Southern Hemisphere, 30 years in duration, uh, in the mountain ash forests of Victoria. And the consensus is very clear that the species is, is at great risk of extinction in the near future. Uh, delays, underfunding, lack of political will and inadequacy of the Victorian government's response, including the Victorian government's systematic weakening of environmental legislation, has led Professor Lindenmeyer to conclude that the possum is on an extinction trajectory within 25 years. Sadly, uh, Professor Lyndon Meyer uh, quit the Leadbeater's uh, possum recovery team in Victor Victoria early this year in disgust. It was reported that his resignation to the Victorian Environment Minister <coughs> stated that the current policies were, quote, unable to appropriately protect the animal and that he could no longer be a part of such a highly ineffective body. In 1998, 5,500 leadbeater possums were reported in the wild by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, and today experts quote between 1,000 and 2,000 in the wild, with only five individuals, down from seven, in captivity. We are on the verge of losing uh, this wonderful animal and our state's faunal emblem. Unfortunately, the loss of half the possum's habitat to fire is not being factored into the regulatory regime under which logging takes place in the Central Highlands. The Victorian government is dragging its feet, underfunding reviews of these regimes and, as Professor Lindenmeyer put it, monitoring the possum into extinction. Victoria's state-owned logging company, Vic Forest, has been criticised time and time again for unlawful logging. Each time it was only because a small, passionate uh, group of people, community groups like Environment, East Gippsland and My Environment, have actually taken them to court. The Victorian Department of Sustainability and Environment, the Victorian government agency with responsibility for ensuring that logging occurs within the law, has been gutted by the Victorian government's savage budget cuts. 
and it was recently slammed by, the Victoria, by Victoria's Auditor General for not even knowing what it was or wasn't responsible for monitoring, let alone proactively auditing whether activities such as logging are, record, are occurring in accordance with the law. Now, as it happens, Vic Forest gets free access to Victoria's uh, forest assets, and it's an economic model that creates a distortion in the market by favouring the, the logging of Victoria's for, uh, native forests over plantation forestry. The free handouts and sweetheart deals don't end with free wood and free access to public lands. As a state-owned business, Vic Forest can call on the government to bail it out at any time if it's running low on cash. Now, without these huge subsidies, these enormous artificial commercial advantages, Vic Forest would go out of business. A recent report by the National Institute of Economic and Industry Research on native forest logging in Victoria found that if Vic Forest were ever to face a level commercial playing field, it would fail. If it ever had to compete directly with plantation timber growers, the market would strongly favour plantation timber because plantation timber is commercially more sustainable and provides greater resource security than the logging and burning of our native forests. Plantations in Western Victoria are estimated to produce no less than twice the volume of pulp logs than those available from Vic Forest under the business as usual case at any time between 2010 and 2049. Even more shocking is the fact that despite of all of these huge subsidies and, and artificial advantages, Vic Forest is losing money. I'll say that again. They get their land for free, they get the trees for free, and they still manage to lose money. This state-owned business enterprise created by legislation with the specific purpose of turning a profit for Victoria's taxpayers has lost money in three of the past six financial years. Incredible feat. The only reason it still exists is because it's been kept afloat by its line of credit with the Victorian government. The 2011-2012 financial year was the fifth year running Victoria, uh, Vic Forest has failed to return any money to taxpayers. Victoria's priceless mountain ash forests are given away for free to log and to burn. This is despite their enormous economic potential to attract tourists and to build upon the region's thriving tourism sector. Those forests have great value in sequestering vast amounts of carbon for generations. They help to maintain a clear water supply, and yet all of this is being logged away. Key areas of the, of the Leadbeater's possum habitat face the threat of logging under Victorian state laws. Timber harvesting in these areas is now removing trees that have essential nesting hollows. But along with the direct harms caused by logging and burning, habitat disturbance due to forestry activities puts even more strain on the Leadbeater's. It is therefore alarming that moves are underway to lock in 20 year contracts to log native forests with compensation payable if contracts are altered by future governments. Uh, legislative efforts are also underway at a state level to weaken and dismantle Victorian environmental uh, protection legislation to facilitate these 20-year contracts. Against all of this, I would like to acknowledge the excellent work being done to save this unique creature and its habitat from extinction. The community group Friends of Leadbeater's Possum have been working tirelessly to raise awareness about the plight of the possum. The Wilderness Society has been encouraging businesses and individuals to protect the possum's habitat by pledging not to use Reflex brand office paper until the pulp used in Reflex is no longer sourced from Leadbeater's possum habitat. Finally, Zoos Victoria have been working on a captive breeding program for the possum. It's also worth mentioning that Zoos Victoria is the largest employer in the Yarra Valley region, with 550 people directly employed and many more indirectly employed for example through catering, security and cleaning operations. Sustainable industries like tourism uh, and other industries they are the future for the Yarra Rangers, not Clearfell logging. And against this backdrop, the uh, Commonwealth Government is about to hand environmental decision-making powers to the states, especially those um, decisions relating to the natural environment. Four decades of environmental protection legislation is at risk of being set aside to allow the states to pursue short-term economic gain at any cost. The handover has three parts. Firstly, the Commonwealth intends to give the states power over environmental decisions by fast-tracking approval bilaterals under the Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act. 
These approval bilaterals authorise states to make decisions currently made by the Commonwealth. COAG is going to agree on these arrangements by December this year and implement them by March next year. Secondly, imminent amendments to the EPBC Act are set to favour the rapid approval of developments ahead of protecting species and habitats. Our environmental laws are already weak enough, but this process threatens to tip the balance decisively in favour of development at any cost. And thirdly, states and territories will be allowed to reform state assessment approvals to fast-track major development projects. RFAs or regional forest agreements are the model for approval bilaterals. Now, RFAs are written agreements between the Commonwealth and a state that exempt, exempt logging areas from the operation of the EPBC Act. Now, the rationale for this is supposedly that environmental protection is equivalent to that offered under the Act. But RFAs have completely failed to protect the environment. The RFA process is flawed at every stage, but perhaps most crucially, there's just no enforcement. It's almost invariably left up to community groups and individuals to take up the battle. For example, the federal court found in, in Tasmania's Wailangta Forest case that logging has a significant <coughs> impact on the Tasmanian <coughs> wedge-tailed eagle, the Wailangta stag beetle and the swift parrot. In response, the Commonwealth and Tasmania changed the RFA. In Victoria's the Brown Mountain case brought by, uh, brought by Environment uh, East Gippsland, logging was found to be unlawful because it breached state laws to protect wildlife. Again, Commonwealth took no action. Uh, currently, the Senate is undertaking a threatened species inquiry, a timely examination of the loss of species in Australia. It's an important example of the work of federal representatives in monitoring the status of our biodiversity in Australia and to ensure that species like the Leadbeater's possum aren't consigned to extinction, as habitat destruction is made ever easier for industry and local interests. And Mr. Pre uh, Madam Acting Deputy President, the Leadbeater's possums facing extinction under the Victorian go state government's appalling environmental record. The Commonwealth needs to step up and strengthen its environmental laws, not hand them over to the states. Leadbeater's possum is the perfect example of why we need to do this and do this urgently. The regional forest agreement that brought us to this point meant that the Commonwealth already ex excused itself from regulating in this area. And the result is the possum is now on a rapid path to extinction. Instead of learning a lesson from this, we're set to hand over even greater power to the states. It simply makes no sense. It makes no sense because where state governments are concerned, safeguarding our natural heritage for the long term always comes ahead, comes ahead of short-term benefits of rapid development and exploitation. The trajectory is in one direction only. Uh, like many other iconic places in Australia, such as the Great Barrier Reef, James Price Point in the Kimberley and Kangaroo Island, the Leadbeater's possum is far too precious to lose. I fear that if the Commonwealth abrogates its responsibility to safeguard these precious places, it's only a matter of time before they are gone and gone forever. The parliament might still be able to save these national treasures, but once they're gone, we'll never be able to bring them back. Let me finish by saying that the Leadbeater's possum was named after John Leadbeater. He was the National Museum's first taxidermist. It is my fear, my great fear, uh, that my children w might only be able to see this wonderful little animal in the way that John Leadbeater knew it, and that was stuffed, sitting on a shelf in a museum where future generations are deprived the opportunity to be able to see and experience part of this planet's wondrous biodiversity. Thank you.